In contrast to such distinctions between high and low culture, the composer-improviser John Zorn, a native of New York's Lower East Side, covers all musical bases. Thought by some to be a Mozartian figure, his music reflects the polyglot nature of his surroundings. in blocks, in changing blocks of sound, and uh, in, in that sense, one possible block is a genre of music, pop music, jazz music, classical music, blues music, hardcore music. They're all blocks that can be ordered and reordered the way the 12 pitches in the chromatic scale can be ordered and reordered. And Cobra is a really great example because most of the changes happen with downbeats and it's very clear when you hear the blocks moving. Well, Culver itself is, the title comes from a war game. Um, my early game pieces were just sports, like lacrosse, hockey, pool, fencing. And I got bored with those names, and I started using um, war games, like these kind of bookshelf games that a company like Avalon Hill made. At a recording session, an ensemble of improvisers brought together by Zorn prepares to perform his music. It's more training than rehearsal. What they play, the actual sounds they make, will hardly be mentioned. Zorn directs them in how he wants them to communicate with him and with each other. The scene that I basically grew up in was a scene of improvisers who improvised in different degrees and with their own different talents. Everybody kind of grew through playing with each other and through listening to different things and created a very particular way of approaching their instrument. What I was really fascinated with was finding a way to harness these people's talents in a compositional framework without actually hindering what they did best, which is improvising. Finding a way to have them work in a group that created a kind of a shape or a kind of a sound that could be identified with what I was interested in, which is changing blocks of sound, but at the same time, which didn't limit their imagination, which never told them what to do. The cards are Zorn's way of signaling a variety of options available to the players, choices affecting the different ways in which the musicians relate to each other. It means that as it goes around, let's say it's here, Spelios, you have this amount of time before it comes to you again. You can make eye contact with anybody else in the band as it comes around and say, when it's my turn to play, you play with me. And it's when your turn, whoever you cued will come in with you. Then it will continue to go around again. Yeah. The person who makes that call to anybody. Anybody in the band. I think like the, the comparison between, say, what Stockhausen was doing in the mid-60s and myself is very valid. Something like Plus Minus, which was, I think, an important composition for me, is something where on the score he has lists of play louder than the last sound you heard, play lower than the last sound you heard, um, play the same volume as the last, things like that, where he's relating to the sounds that the improvisers make. I took that basically one step further. I don't talk about any sounds that anybody's making, I talk about the improvisers themselves. You can play with this person at this time if you want, or with this person, or in alternation with that person, but what you play is totally up to you and who you decide to play with is totally up to you. Okay, ready?
also Thursday. And the press tax, the press tax, the scam for the winner, the for me, it's more about the live situation because you actually see the physicality of the people going through the process of dealing with these set rules. Every society has rules that people deal with in different ways. Um, what, what I basically created is a small society and everybody kind of finds their own position in that society. It really becomes like a, a psychodrama. It's, it's, like, uh, it's, it's like scream therapy or primal therapy. People are given power and it's very interesting to see which people like to run with that power, which people like to run away from it, who, who are very docile and just do what they're told and who try very hard to get more control and more power. So like we were saying before, it's very much like the political arena in a certain kind of a sense too. But ultimately, if you're in the audience and you're looking at this, the people on the stage are exposing themselves more nakedly than they ever have before, more nakedly than they are when they're just playing music. Um, because they're, they're having a little carrot dangled in front of them. And it's interesting to see who tries to grab the carrot and who doesn't. And a lot of times the people who try to grab the carrot, it's pulled out of their hands by someone else in the band. So it, it becomes kind of a, a scary, frightening thing to be in front of that band, to see these people kind of blossom and, and become the assholes that they, that they really are. <laughs> Hey, Burkett. Hey, Burkett. Hey, Burkett. Hey, Burkett. Group relationships are just one of many kinds of improvisation that use the city of New York as a base and as a stimulus. 